What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's discussion day. Ah uh, yes, I haven't done one of these in a long time, um, mostly because I have so many running list series is that it's impossible to find time to do this, but you know what? I'm gonna take an easy week and do a shorter video, and uh, I think I'm gonna talk about something that me and the Discord were discussing the other day. Sorry that I'm uh, dressed in the, the wife beater. Um, I'm stuck inside all weekend, because uh, besides going to work, uh, I have nothing else to do. So, um, because I can't, obviously. So you guys are lucky I even did my hair to look halfway presentable and put pants on. But today we're going to be talking about what to do when you get a bad ruling. Rulings are one of the most important things that a judge at a tournament can do for you as a player. Given the over 10,000 cards there are in this game, certain weird card interactions and other things may come up that both players do not agree with how the current game state is supposed to continue. Therefore, it is up to us as players to call a judge during an official tournament for them to come over and make a ruling on the current board state so that you guys can then continue your gameplay. However, um, what happens when that judge makes a mistake? They're humans, just like everyone else, and sometimes they make the wrong call. Well, you as a player have, uh, two options. One, uh, just accept the bad ruling if it doesn't totally just immediately lose you the game and you are trying not to burn too much time on the clock, uh, just accept it and move on. Sorry, but you're gonna have to deal okay. with it. Or if it seems to be worth your time and there's enough time on the clock and it seems like you are really, really correct, you can appeal that to the head judge. For those of you looking to get into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh and getting your decks ready for when the competitive season actually is restarted this year, and who have never been to an official tournament, the way it happens is at the beginning of the tournament, the tournament organizer, normally the owner of the game store or whatever, will point out the current Konami head judge representative at the tournament. He also might point out the people walking around who are acting as uh, regular judges, but uh, pointing out the head judge is the most important because if you have an appeal, that's the person you need to be talking to in order to get the final ruling. Okay, thank you. And I've got one final question for you. If you had to describe Yu-Gi-Oh in just a few few words, what? How would you describe it? Um, it's not worth it playing this game. Okay, thank you, Paulo, guys. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Once the head judge makes a final ruling, um, that's pretty much all you can do. So at that point, it pretty much comes down to whether or not the head judge uh, overrides the previous judge's ruling or agrees with them, and then you are just kind of stuck with what you have to go for. And that's really all there is to it. And if you're stuck with a bad ruling, you are stuck with a bad ruling, and how you continue the gameplay really comes down to, you know, how salty you are as the responsible logical adult you will see that hey everyone makes mistakes and it is just a game so you're not going to be a jerk to your opponent <laughs> however um i do understand that this is an aggravating thing all right so now that we are all on the same page as far as what happens when there is a ruling question and what happens when there is a question about that ruling question <laughs> there isn't much to discuss because that's just the proper procedure and acting like a, an adult and trying to be as constructive as possible even in the face of a bad ruling really is just player common courtesy and good sportsmanship none of that is really up for debate however i would like to use my comment section as a open forum so if any of you guys have maybe had a bad ruling from your judges you can stick your little tale of woe in the description down below and we can as a community come together and try to figure out whether or not that was truly a bad call or not because again we're all just humans but to cap the video off I have two of my own that you guys can talk about uh, so that maybe perhaps we can get the discussion going number one back in duelist alliance format i was playing a rank four spirit deck uh w w uh chaos variant i suppose i've been playing a similar build of the deck uh, probably since the uh fire fist format all the way till uh we got uh Klees because I just really, really enjoyed the deck and I liked how the spirits worked and there was some nifty things you could do with cards like Creature Swap. And when Duelist Alliance came out, it was the beginning of the Pendulum era. We didn't really have any Pendulum cards that were particularly good at that point. However, we did have three very strong decks, Yang Zing, Shadals, and surprisingly strong out of the gate, Burning Abyss. And it's that Shadal deck that was probably the strongest, at least initially, because it was probably the most full supported deck right out of the gate. 
with some really solid fusion monsters that are actually pretty problematic, as well as a quick play fusion spell that allows them to dodge certain removal effects. And as the cheeky spirit player, one of my go-to plays for stealing my opponent's staff was normal summoning one of my uh, spirits, maybe like Tsukiyomi or Aratama or whatever, and then playing the card Creature Swap to give them my spirit monster, and then to take their whatever boss monster they left on the board. At the end of my turn, that spirit monster will return to my hand, leaving my opponent with nothing, and I get to permanently keep their monster. During a locals tournament, I had brought this deck, and I was playing against a Shadal player. He had El Shadal Winda on board, and I thought, oh, well that's a big pain in the butt, I'm just gonna take it with Creature Swap. I activate the Creature Swap after summoning one of my spirits, and he activates El Shadal Fusion, swapping his El Shadal Winda for an El Shadal Construct. Then we let all of the chain work backwards, and the last card to resolve was my Creature Swap. I said, okay, fine, I guess I'll take your Shadal Construct instead of your El Shadal Winda. The guy says, uh, that doesn't work like that. Uh, your card lost target, so therefore it just fizzles because it wasn't allowed to resolve the way it started. I obviously said that Creature Swap doesn't target, it doesn't really care about the game state as long as it, at the end of resolution, is able to swap two monsters, because I can read. And so we called the judge over. The judge sided with the Shadal player because cards were meta and who cares about the rogue player? I don't know. But I am 99.999% sure that judge made an incorrect ruling. I was supposed to be able to take his monster because my card doesn't target. Granted, I could be incorrect. Uh, however, I'm pretty sure I'm not, but I was faced with a bad ruling. Because it was a locals tournament, I didn't fight it too much. I'm not even sure there would be a head judge to go to. It was what it was. <laughs> <laughs> however, um, okay. The next story comes from my friend Kieran over on my Discord. That's the same Discord that we make my lists in, so you guys want to get on that, feel free. But yes, uh, Connor brings up this very, very uh, interesting ruling that he was given at his regionals in Tulsa. And that was that Assault Blackwing Seo the Rainhider, which is a level 2 synchro monster that we recently talked about in my worst synchro vid, when it is treated as a tuner monster by its own effect, because the effect says this card can be treated as a tuner monster and not a tuner synchro monster, the judge ruled that it is not considered a tuner synchro monster and therefore just a tuner monster. So you can either count it as just a synchro or just a tuner, but not a synchro tuner by language of the card. He appealed it and uh, they, they said that is correct. Personally, I think that's a bub kiss because Tuner Synchro Monster is not a card type. Midway through a monster card, there is a spiel of effect types that tells you what the card is. For instance, Formula Synchro on here is an effect machine synchro tuner monster. All that, all that stuff. Notice that it doesn't say synchro tuner as one type of effect. It's, it's, they're, they're disparate types of effects. So therefore, I'm led to believe that the way Seo is working is that it just appends that tuner effect onto that long laundry list of the things that it is. It doesn't replace the one that says synchro. Why would it do that? In a synchro climbing deck like Black Wings or Synchrons or something else, there are cards that require you to synchro summon using synchro monsters or synchro tuner monsters, something like shooting Quasar Dragon. So therefore, it makes sense that uh, you would have a low level synchro monster that can act as a synchro tuner monster in case you are trying to build to some larger synchro monster in your playbook combo thing. So the spirit of the card would like imply that you're probably trying to treat this as a synchro tuner monster if you're playing it in black wings. I think it was a misruling, but again, this is something we can talk about in the comments below. Let me see what you guys think about it. Anyway, I'm like super scatterbrained. I can't wait to edit this. I'm assuming I'm gonna sound like I'm all over the place. I don't know why I can't seem to concentrate. <sighs> I don't know, too much caffeine maybe? I think it might be too, I might have drinking too much, drinking, drinking. I might have drank too much caffeine today. That's what happens if you're stuck inside and you're bored. But anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think, and uh, like I said before, give me an example of a time when you had a ruling question and uh, whether or not you felt the judge made the correct call, and we'll talk about it. It'll be fun. And as always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember guys, if you don't troll, no matter who will, I will see you guys for the next List Day. Woo! Well, looks like they made it through the video. But you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.